We know that mother-child bond is special and unique, but the connection fathers have with kids is powerful too. This week we're digging into the dad effect, sharing ways involved, hands-on dads make a difference in their children's lives. Today, what kids need from dads to grow up to be happy, healthy, resilient adults. Studio 5 Parenting contributor Heather Johnson joins me. You're a family researcher, so you see on the front lines what the data even says about this relationship. What should we know? Well, first of all, it's it's kind of unfortunate because 40, 50 years ago when we were really diving into parenting, we really neglected the fact that fathers are just as important as mothers. Mm. And so for a long time, we've overlooked it. And it's just now that we're saying, you know what? We need dads as much as we need moms. They bring something to the table that's very different. So we know from the research, very giant findings, like kids who have a dad who's present and engaged do better in school, are less likely to deal with anxiety and depression, are less likely to try drugs and alcohol and premarital sex. They also have better communication, stronger relationships. I mean, there's really not an area in a child's life that isn't positively affected by an involved dad. You touched on some big kind of far reaching benefits. I am just in the infancy of parenthood, but I can already see on the ground. I mm -hmm. knew this beforehand. It was something I subscribed to that yes, fathers mm -hmm. are important. I grew up with a great dad. Mm -hmm. I recognize his influence in my life. But as I see Mark parent, I can s just tangibly see, Heather, the benefits my children are taking away from a dad who, I mean, little things like pushes them to climb a little higher yes. than mom would let, would let them do. I mean, little things like that, you see that on the ground. Absolutely. And it's every day. And like you, I grew up with an amazing father. He still is such a present in my presence in my life. But now I get to watch my husband with six kids do the same, push them where I wouldn't, yeah. love them in ways that I don't know how, be open to opportunities and ideas that I would have shut down because most likely I'm uncomfortable comfortable with it first and mm -hmm. it's amazing to see their lives on an hour by hour basis are better because he's in their life and so that's what we want to do and and I think we're very quick and we should probably mention first that the number one thing dads need to do is spend time with their kids time. the number one and we're quick with it because we hear it so much but love really is t-i-m-e that's mm -hmm. really how we spell mm -hmm. it and so we want our dads to be open and energetic about day-to-day -day interactions now I don't know about you but in our house my husband's usually saying six kids 15 or so minutes a kid every day I I can't do that. Right. And so one of the ways that it works out really well for fathers is just take your kids with you. Let them go and experience what you experience. When my husband goes to Home Depot, all six kids are like, can I go, can I go? <laughs> and as he pulls a couple to take with them, they always come back having learned something, having gained knowledge, right. watching my husband deal with someone there who's maybe unkind or impatient or helping someone in the parking lot. They learn because they're with him. And so we need fathers who spend time with their kids. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the isolated, <clears throat> no. like designated on the floor playing blocks and puzzles, but it can be just the everyday activities, just the presence and the involvement. Absolutely. And it, it feels really good for a father because it kind of frees him up, right? Because sometimes when kids are small, it's very uncomfortable for a father to think, well, I've got to get on the floor and make goo goo gaga sounds and figure <laughs> yeah. out what this looks like. Yeah. Instead of, wait a second, I can be myself and I can bring you into what I am and who I am and then teach you about me and now we can love one another that way. It's a pretty amazing thing that starts to happen. Somewhat stereotypical, I realize, that we often think of women as mm -hmm. the emotional nurturers. Right. But what can children learn from dads when it comes to emotions? Well, the first thing they can learn is how to control them. Every child deserves a dad who can control his emotions. And I've come to realize this not just on a personal level, but when I work with clients, I really do think that the most important thing that a dad can offer up, aside from that time and the love, is that he shows his kids that he can control his emotions. That he knows what to do when he's angry or frustrated or hurt or, or uh, impatient, and he knows how to handle those things. It teaches our kids what to do with their own emotion. Plus, remember, a dad who's volatile in his emotions creates a very unstable habit household and so our kids don't ever feel secure and so in the back of their minds they're always thinking I'm not okay well why because I have to watch every word I say and everything I do because if it's wrong dad's gonna do this and so they never are okay with themselves and so dads need to learn to control their emotions talk to us about the importance of affection mm -hmm. dad to daughter dad to son I mean you talked about sometimes the discomfort of the goo goo gag gas right. smoochy lovey but we can't undervalue that affection and the need to express love always being expressing love and a love expression needs to come through physical touch that's appropriate it also needs to come through words and it needs to come from a dad not just because he's putting someone to bed or came home from work it's got to come because it's randomly a Thursday in the middle of the day through a text message or randomly when he throws a little girl or a little boy up in the air and gives him a hug for no reason. Mm -hmm. The other thing about expressing love is it needs to come in specifics also. So a very general I love you is amazing. 
but an I love you with reasons behind it does even more for our kids. So the expression of love needs to be physical and with words. Even when we look at research, we know that our daughters have higher self-esteem when their fathers show appropriate physical love and affection. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. directly related to their esteem. So there's room to always show love and affection that's appropriate to our kids. Children, you say, need a dad who keeps his word. Who keeps his word, yes. We need dads who, when they say, I'll take you to the park, take our kids to the park. And when they say, when I get home, we'll go here, that they go. And when he says, I'll help you with your homework, he finds a way to sit down and do it. Uh, this one rings very true to me. I remember being very young and my dad making a promise that he would always protect me. And it's even emotional in hindsight. There was a couple years there where I remember little things like a friend down the street or someone doing something. But it really hit me with my dad when I was in sixth grade and a teacher accused me of passing notes, mm. which I wasn't doing, and sentenced me to detention. Well, that is very out of character for me. Yeah, and it was, yeah. it was terrifying. And I remember going, going to practice, going to my game, getting home. And by the time I got home, my dad came home from work and he would called the teacher, made it clear that she should never question my honesty or my integrity. Wow. And he left a note on my bed that, that told me how much he loved me and thanked me for being honest and doing right things. And I remember very clearly thinking, my dad kept his word. He promised he would always protect me. That is what it does. I knew in that moment that he trusted my word, that he respected me. That's what it does when dads keep their word. It teaches children where they're safe. They always have someone to rely on. So it's a really big deal. Kids, dads can teach kids about humility. I want to jump to this one. You say it, kids need a dad who doesn't take things personally. He doesn't take it Why personal. Why is that important? Because when we take things personally, one, we're negating the fact that they're kids. They're growing and learning and changing and developing, right? Your child is going to say to you, you don't understand me, or maybe even I don't like you or uh, I hate you right now. You could easily hear those things. When we take them personally, it crowds out all the space in our brain because we're being offended to see what it is our child really needs and where they're hurting. There isn't space for both, right? So once we've taken it personally, now we're offended. And so we don't have room to go, wait a second, for my child to actually say that, there must be something wrong. What can we address and how can I help attend to that thing that's wrong? And so we don't wanna take things personal. There's no reason to judge. They are six and 17 and they're figuring it out. And we need to model for them, what do we do when someone says something unkind or hurts our feelings? We could go on and on, the list is long Dads can teach kids how to play, how to work. Again, that humility piece is so important. But the bottom line is dads need to be there. They, they need, need to, to be, be there. They need to be involved all the time. Yep. Heather, thank you so much. Heather has a private practice where she helps families and couples. You can look for her contact information on our website.